Hey Ross World, my money makes money. This video goes out to Old Big Truck. He wanted me to do a video on it, so here it is. Why is it so hard to obtain unsecured personal lines of credit? It's quite simple. They're not a secured loan like your mortgage or your auto loan, which is a one-time thing. An unsecured loan, when it comes to that line of credit, is used to finance something over a period of time, not just a one-time payment. So you go through a very rigorous credit evaluation in order to see, so what may factor into this? Debt to income ratio, we understand that. How much debt do you have in comparison to your income? Now, if that's topsy-turvy, if that ups and down, that's the seesaw battle, you're not gonna win, you're not gonna get that line of credit because it's unsecured, because they're saying, hey, we trust you over this course of time, or over these course of years, that when you take this much money out of your line of credit, that you're gonna pay it back, not just like a one specific loan, that you'll just be keep paying back each month, and the dealings with the bank is over because they already gave you the money, and now you're repaying it. This is kind of a partnership. This is kind of a marriage where you kind of give and take give and take, or rather they give and you take, and then you take and they give. You understand what I'm getting at here because they're gonna give you a line of credit, you're gonna pay them their money back. They're gonna give you a line of credit, they're gonna pay your money back. It's sort of a contract. So understand this personal unsecured line of credit. So what are some of the type of purposes that one may use for lines of credit? Now say for instance you're so, some sort of inventor where you don't know how much this project that you are actually uh, doing a prototype or some sort of masking on top of your 3D printer or you're even in the small or the first stages of production. You don't know how much money you're going to need and quite frankly, you may not have the capital or you may have the capital, but you don't want to use your money right now because that's your livelihood. So you do this unsecured personal line of credit where a bank over a certain amount of time given through that contract you're going to be taking out money so often to fund this particular project. Or maybe you're a real estate person or, or, or you're a contractor of some sort and you need a loan to build some sort of outrageous home that is going to take some amount of money that you really don't know. Because lines of credit is mainly used for various variable money amounts that you really don't have an idea how much it's going to eventually cost. You have an estimate. That's why they don't do those personal loans. So people out there that's taking out a personal loan for a particular project, they can't bust that budget, but with a line of credit, it's not like you have all the money in the bank, but it's kind of like you do have an substantial amount of money to use. But remember, you have to pay this fucking money back. So don't get outrageous with that. So whether it be you're an inventor, you're a contractor, or you're just financing a project, these are some of the main uses for lines of credit. Also, to pay those employees that may be working for you and you're not paying them out of pocket because, quite frankly, you don't have any revenue generating to pay them. So you need to pay them somehow, and a line of credit is how you do it. Now, lines of credit does not come easy because these are the people, they try to give credit to A1 creditors or you have so much property, you have so much equity and somewhere that you can tap into in case you don't pay them their money back. But you really don't want to do that Let's focus on the credit piece that you want so they just say, hey, <laughs> we trust you. That's not the case. You have to have something to lose. Now, now I know some of you are saying, well, hey, man, I'm just going to throw it in my credit card. I have a black card. Now, a black card doesn't mean that you have like umpteenth million dollars. And there's an exclusive club of black card members. That's with American Express, where they pretty much have freedom to do anything. Now, a quarter of a million dollars, a million dollars on their black card. Now, even if that's the case and you have a black card, I do not advise you doing any of the things I named, was it finance on a project, an inventor or with some inventions, or your contract to build some sort of new innovative home or building. I don't advise you for one reason and one reason only. A line of credit primarily and usually has a lower interest rate as a credit card. Because credit card, as we know, I just throw out these crazy numbers because that's exactly what they do. Anywhere from 10 to 35 to 40% of variable rate. But I promise you this, when you get to a certain amount of money, you know what they do. They max out that variable interest rate that they say that you have. So I don't advise it. 
When you get down with a line of credit, you and that banker, you're doing a contract about how much that line of credit is going to cost you over the course of time or how much you may or how long that you may need it. So it's a contract. It's a business. It's set in stone so you know exactly what you're getting yourself into. And that's a big plus. Now, lines of credit are cheaper than those loans that you may get from a pawn shop or even a payday loan center because those interest rates are extremely astronomically and ridiculously high. So don't even go there, okay, guys? They are horrible. And most of them are cheaper than credit cards, as I said before. But on the other hand, they are more expensive than your secure loans for mortgage or a car because as we said before that's for a particular item the bank actually knows where the money is going to when you have an unsecured personal line of credit they really don't know you got to run out to Lowe's to go buy some crescent wrenches or a lug nut or a drill bit or a street driver I'm just naming stuff guys you know how I do it but the point is they don't know where all the money is going to so once again you have to have excellent credit and you have some weary things on your credit do not feel bad when they deny your credit because you say, well, I have a 720, I have a 730. They say, yeah, you do, but in the last seven years, sir, you had a bankruptcy, you had this, you had that. We saw you did a lot of credit repair, but we look at the whole credit history because we're giving you a line of credit. This is unsecured. You can pretty much buy anything you want. This is not like you buying a car or a house. So understand that aspect of a secured loan and an unsecured personal line of credit. They're two different things, guys. The bank knows what they're getting themselves into because when you don't pay that mortgage loan, they're going to come snatch your house. When you don't pay that car loan, they're going to come snatch your car. But you didn't put all this stuff in your unsecured personal line of credit. They're like, oh, show us your manifest. Show us your list. Show us your equipment list because we got to uh, recuperate. We have to uh, take away nine flathead screwdrivers, two drill bits, and it's crazy. So that's why it's so difficult for you to get a line of credit. Maybe there's something on your credit. Maybe you don't make enough. Maybe you don't have enough equity. You really have to sit down and let them tell you what is the issues here. All right. Two things I really want to leave you with, with this personal unsecured line of credit. First thing is most unsecured personal lines of credit are not tax deductible. And you know what that means. You're not going to save any money there. You're going to pay every single dime in taxes when you have this line of credit. And the second thing is most of these personal unsecured lines of credit have maintenance fees, whether it's monthly or it's annually. So make sure if you do go get a line of credit, have transparency in every line, in every byline, in every small print of that contract so you know exactly how much you pay, when you need to pay it, what's the penalty when you don't pay it, everything that you can possibly think of, everything because and eventually you're the one who would be getting shafted because all the banks that I know, they haven't ran out yet, haven't went out of business, all profitable billions of dollars. So at the end, the reason why they're profitable is because they give this business to people because they're going to make profit at some sort of percentage. So be smart, be careful, and read every single line and, and every single question that comes to mind because you want to know what you're getting yourself into. This is Ross World. Line of credit, this is really your choice. Ask those questions, understand your contract, and be mindful of what you're getting yourself into. I'm out.